we'll try that again and everybody said father we thank you and bless your name we thank you for your word the eternal word and the word that neither satan nor demon nor man can contradict once you say and once you pronounce it will be done at the time you have appointed we come to you now lord and we're going to study your word what you have for our day for the last days until christ will come and we pray you'll keep us awake to your word that your word will be clear to everyone and the fulfillment will be certain and sure in the heart of everyone. Amen. Give us understanding. Give us your spirit. Grant us revelation. Grant us inspiration. And grant us illumination to understand what you are revealing today in Jesus' name. Amen. And confirm your word for our generation. For dispensation and for every congregation and convert and Christian in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to Daniel chapter 7. Actually, Daniel had been interpreting the dreams of other people the revelation of other people but now god is giving daniel directly the revelation and as we come to daniel chapter 7 and we're reading from verse 1 it says in the first year of Beshazzar, king of babylon daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters now you will see here that the dream the vision came to Daniel directly instead of coming to Nebuchadnezzar and he being called an interpreter instead of coming to Belshazzar and then he is just called as an interpreter he said in the first year of Belshazzar the king of Babylon Daniel had a dream understand something here he had had this dream this vision this revelation before the death of Belshazzar but now Belshazzar is dead. Why is he recording it now? Well, he has recorded it before, but in Daniel chapters 1 to 6 deal with history. The history of what had happened. And so what Daniel had done by the inspiration of God, by the leading, the guidance of God, is that he gathered all the historic materials from chapter 1 to chapter 6 all together. And now he's talking about prophecy. We come to the second part of the book of Daniel. That's the reason why you have 7 all to 12 dealing with prophecy and now the dream came unto him what dream did he have actually this one is similar to the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had in chapter 2 in chapter 2 Nebuchadnezzar saw the image of gold silver brass iron world kingdoms world empires Babylon Middle Persia Greece and uh, Rome and the, and the Romans and the Roman Empire. Now, he saw it from the view of a man. From the view of a man, gold and silver and brass 
and iron. But now we're looking at those same four kingdoms from the perspective of God. God saw them as beasts. And that's what was revealed unto Daniel. Now you look at verse 2. In Daniel chapter 7 verse 2, it said, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. When he talks about the four winds of heaven, and he said, they strove, they were striving, they were in a conflict. North, south, east, west, the compass on earth. All those four corners and the cardinal points, the wind strove. The spirit of those bees and the spirits of those emperors of the empires, they fought against each other until one destroyed the other so as to prevail over the other and reign. And it said, upon the great sea, a sea of humanity, a sea of people in this area, Babylon, a sea of humanity over here in Middle Persia, a sea of humanity over here in Greece, a sea of, of humanity in the Roman Empire. And then in verse 3, it tells us, and the four great beasts. The four great bees is talking about the leaders, about the rulers, about the kings, and about the emperors. And he looked at them, they were like bees. And it says, they came up from the sea, divers, one from another. And then in verse 4, it tells us in verse 4, it says, the force was like a lion, Babylon, and arch wings like eagles eagles wings and the wing is talking about how fast they were to move from here to there and to conquer the whole of the world at that time and i beheld that the wings were thereof were plunged they lost their steam they lost their speed they lost their ability and they lost their agility to move from here and there the wings were plugged up and it says and it lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man now you understand beast but then as a man and a man's heart was given to it. As we continue now, you understand, we're talking about the four empires, we're talking about Babylon, we're talking about Middle Persia, we're talking about Greece, and we're talking about the Roman Empire. We're looking at the dominion of the king and his conquering saints. The dominion of the king above all the other kings, Above all the other emperors, here comes the ancient of days. Here comes the creator of the whole universe. Here comes the king of kings and the lord of lords. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it tells us now, it says, And I saw in the night visions, behold one like the son of man. That's our Christ. That's our Lord. That's our Savior. That's our Redeemer. That's the one that will rule over everything. Remember, in chapter 2, that's the stone that was cut out of the mountain and struck that image, all the empires, and everything crumbled, and he filled all the earth. He said, I saw one, like the Son of Man came of the clouds of heaven, clouds of heaven, and you then the son of God the Christ thou says you will see when the clouds will descend and it will ride on the clouds and it will come with the angels of God from heaven it's not going to the point where Christ will come and it says and came to the ancient of days that the God of heaven he came to the ancient of days and they brought him 
the son of man near before him the ancient of days and then in verse 14 it says in verse 14 and that was given unto him unto the son of man unto messiah unto the mediator unto the king of the unto the prince or princes that was given unto him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all 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 people and nations and languages shall serve him at last finally every knee shall bow every tongue will confess that jesus is lord that they shall serve him and he says and his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed look at verse 27 in verse 27 he tells us and the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high the kingdom coming to Christ then gets to the saints and it says we shall reign with him it says he's given the kingdom the dominion the power the authority the glory shall be given unto the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him we're talking about the dominion of the king and we're talking about his to his conquering of saints three things we're looking at in chapter seven today we're looking at number one the tyranny and the terribleness of the godless all those godless monarchs and godless kings and godless beasts of a man and godless emperors the tyranny and the terribleness of the goddess number two number two is the throne and the triumph of the true god a true god the living god the light breaching god the limitless god that will come and that will reign it's referred to as the ancient of days he was before any man was created he had been from eternity all through to eternity and his dominion his kingdom is forever and ever the throne and the triumph of the true god number three is the termination of the times of the gentiles the times of the gentiles the gentiles babylon the gentiles middle persia the gentiles greece the gentiles rome all of them the times of the gentiles will come to an end the termination of the times of the gentiles let's go back to number one number one we're looking at the tyranny and the terribleness of the godless the tyranny and the terribleness of the godless as i've told you is talking about the godless kingdoms of the world the godless empires of the world many of them have ruled already and now we're getting to the last part and the last part had ruled before the roman empire but the last part of the roman empire with the ten toes of chapter two the toes that were told iron mixed with clay partly strong and partly a weak the time is coming when the ten kingdoms will come together and then there will be the Roman Empire. It will be the revised, revealed, renewed Roman Empire. And that is when Christ will be preparing to come again. The Antichrist will come out of those ten toes. And eventually, the mouth of the Lord, the breath of the Lord, the power of the Lord will crush and destroy and nullify all the power of those ten 
kings of the Roman, revised Roman Empire. We're looking at three things there. Number one, we're looking at the fierce, stormy battles of the Gentile conflict. The Gentiles always fighting each other. And very near the time of Christ to come, Jesus already had said in Matthew chapter 24, kingdom against kingdom and nation against kingdom. There will be earthquake and there will be tornadoes. There will be all these various things. And then we're told in Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 26, it tells us men's hearts will perplex them because of the things they are seeing. The fierce storm some battles of the Gentile conflict. Number two, the four symbolic beasts of Gentile cruelty. And then number three, the final strange brutality of the Gentile crowns. Look at number one there. Number one there, the fierce tummy battles of the Gentile, the Gentile conflicts. I read that to you already. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 17. And we're reading from verse 12. Isaiah chapter 17 verse 12. It tells us there. It said, Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas. And then it says, And to the rushing of the nations. They make a noise like the noise of the sees the rushing of the nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. It's talking about the conflict that will come at the end with all these gentle powers. It tells us in verse 13 in verse 13 it says the nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, the nations will be in conflict in battle, one against the other. And it says, but God shall rebuke them. Our God will conquer. Our Christ will conquer. Look at the sun has taken your response away. Yeah. And then it says, and they shall flee off. If they shall flee far off and shall be chased as the child of the mountains before the wind and like the ruling thing before the whirlwind it just saying that all those conflicts they will soon clear off the, the stone from the mountain will crush and will destroy and will make all those uh, kingdoms of gold and silver and brass and iron and iron and clay or every, everything will become like chaff and the wind of God's judgment will scatter them and they'll no more be seen and the stone will now become a mountain and the mountain will fill the whole earth look at number two there number two there we're seeing the four symbolic bees of gentile cruelty symbolic symbolic all those bees that will fight against each other and one conquer number two will conquer number one number three will conquer number two and number four will conquer number three the bees bees but when it says bees i want you to look at the new testament and look at second peter second peter chapter two in second peter chapter two we're reading there from verse 12 second peter chapter two we're looking Look at this. It says, but these as natural brute beasts. They're not really animals, but they're as natural brute beasts. In their disposition, in their depravity, in their cruelty, in their mannerisms, and in the things they did, and in their power, and in the manifestation of the power and dominion they had as emperors of empires they'll be as natural brute beasts made to be taken and then it says and to be destroyed they speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish all those powers all those emperors all those kings like bees they shall utterly perish in their own Corruption. As we come back to Daniel, Daniel, we're looking at chapter 7, verse 19. Daniel, 
chapter 7 reading here from verse 19 now explanation is being given to Daniel as to what all these bees what they meant and it says when I would know when I will try to understand, when I will try to decipher, when I will try to analyze, when I will try to see through the truth, it says of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others. It says exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, of iron, and its nails like brass and which devout and break in pieces and stand upon the residue with his feet. When I try to look at the callousness, at the cruelty, at the ferocity, at the wickedness of this personality, I didn't really understand. And then in verse 23, in verse 23, we are told, it is thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom the beast the kingdom the first beast the first kingdom the second beast the second kingdom the third beast the third kingdom and the fourth and the final beast the final and the fourth kingdom upon the earth empires upon the earth the fourth empire Babylonian Empire over all the earth, the Second Empire, the Middle Persian Empire over all the earth, and the Third Empire, the Grecian Empire, Alexander the Great over all the earth, and the final Roman Empire over all the earth. And the interpretation was given to him from heaven. There were divers from each other, from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth. And shall devour the whole earth. Babylon, uh, Babylonian captivity, Babylonian empire had rule over all the earth. And Daniel said in his interpretation, You, Nebuchadnezzar, you are the king. Anyone you want, anyone over all the earth, you destroyed, and nobody could challenge you. The same thing with the Mudri Persian Empire, and they had a law, a decree, and whatever they said affected everyone all over the earth. Anyone they wanted to throw into the lion's den, into the fire, they wanted to kill, they had dominion to devour over all the whole earth and you think about alexander the great in the grecian empire that's exactly the same thing and the roman empire with their iron force and iron brutality they had the same dominion over all the earth now the final form of that Roman Empire, that's where the Antichrist will rise up and he will have the power over all the earth. He will even say that there is a mark and there is that mark to be taken either in the forehead or on the hand. If anyone will not take that mark, that person will not buy, that person will not sell, that person will not, he cannot operate in any way on earth. And the word of God says, let us be wise and notice the name and the number of that beast, of that antichrist, because he'll be brutal over all the earth. That's why Christ will take his bride, his church, the body of Christ. He'll take us out of the earth before the final manifestation of that brutal, cruel, ferocious, terrible animal of a man. The Antichrist will be in heaven while the great tribulation is taking place here on earth. Somebody will say amen to that. And it says and shall tread it down and break it in pieces look at number three here number three we're looking at the final strange brutality of gentile crowns this final one will come the brutality if you thought you had seen cruelty and brutality 
in the time of Nebuchadnezzar, you haven't seen anything yet. If you think you have seen any cruelty or callousness in the time of the Middle Persian Empire, you haven't seen anything yet. If you think you've seen any evil, the depths of evil and the height of evil in the time of the Grecian Empire, you've not seen anything yet. That's why Jesus says, and then shall be great tribulation and great suffering that will happen on the earth that had never happened nor happened again. And except those days shall be shortened, no flesh that shall remain alive. But for the elect's sake, because of the Israelites, the Jews, that will pass through that great tribulation, the days shall be shortened. It tells us about this final manifestation of the power of the bees. It said, after this I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, it devout and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of, of it. And then it says, and it was diverse, different from all the bees that were before it, and uh, it had ten horns. Again, remember, ten toes of the final revelation and formation of the Roman Empire. Ten toes in chapter 2, ten horns for crowns, ten, ten horns for headship in chapter 7. Look at verse 8. In verse 8 it says, And I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn that's the antichrist before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the root he'll fight against those three and he'll bring them down behold in his in this horn were eyes intelligence like the eyes of men, like the intelligence of men, and mouth speaking great things will speak blasphemy. What kind of blasphemy will that Antichrist speak in Second Thessalonians chapter 2? I'm reading from verse 3. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come. If falling away first, the days coming, the time of the Antichrist will not come except there's a falling away first. What does that mean? The church at large, the visible church, the denominational church, they'll fall away from the truth. They'll not know the truth of the rapture. They'll not emphasize the truth of the coming king. They will not emphasize the reign of the Antichrist. They will know virtually nothing about the time coming. And even the basic doctrines of salvation, of holiness without which no man shall say the Lord, of the power of the Holy Ghost that comes upon the sanctified, the churches and the people, they will fall away from them. And then they understanding that we must endure unto the end if we're going to escape the deluge of suffering coming the church will fall away they'll just be doing ceremonies and entertainment and harvest and you know festivities and all that until that day will come they'll be saying peace peace and there's no peace and suddenly that evil thing will come and it says it will not come until there's a falling away force and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition that is the antichrist will come when he comes what he will be saying look at verse 4 it says in verse 4 who opposes and exalteth himself and exalteth himself 
yourself above all that is called God. There will be hero worship. Hero worship. They will say, that's the man. Who can fight with this man? Who can bring this man down? The Antichrist will be the hero of the people because he will be energized by Satan. Satan incarnate. And then it says he exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that uh, he as God seated in the temple of God showing himself that he is God you will not be here on earth at that time I will not be here on earth at that time because everybody will own that antichrist as God is the greatest power and he can do anything, he can fight heaven, if I can fight earth, he can fight anyone and he will destroy with brutal power. That's why the Lord is saying be ready before that time comes so that when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and then we which are alive, the believers, the body of Christ saved and sanctified and purified will be taken along with him that you're not playing religion that your name is in the book of life and that when Christ comes he'll take you away with the saints and you will not remain here at that time I will not be here at that time look at verse 5 in verse 5 remember ye not that when I was yet with you I told you these things that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Hold on. You know, the time we're living now is the time very near the coming of the Lord. Look at Acts of the Apostles, generally from chapter 1 to chapter 28, the emphasis because at that time it was still far from the time of the end. The emphasis is on salvation. The emphasis is on healing. The emphasis is on signs and wonders. And as you go through all the acts, you don't find the emphasis on this final form of the Roman Empire. Some people say get us back to the acts of the apostles no you don't want to do that because you are living at the time of the end and the antichrist will still show up and you don't have any you don't have the emphasis of these final things in the acts you don't even have them in the gospels except in matthew chapter 24 th chapter 25 and mark chapter 13 and luke chapter 21 and, and so you cannot say we're going back uh, to you know those good old days healing 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 yes you might be healed yes you may have signs and waters what when the antichrist comes you are healthy but you know if you don't have the stamina to buy and uh, to take and uh, to reject the mark of the beast how are you going to sell how are you going to work how are you going to get food are you going to pay for anything uh, and except those days shall be shot in no man will escape that's what we reveal what is revealed in the epistles and in revelation that's the reason why as the believers are living now we're not saying take us back to the acts of the apostles take us back no move us on and let us know the things that are going to happen in days our time because the generation that sees the beginning of this sin is a seat up because he that is coming is at the door remember ye not that when i was yet with you i told you these six look at verse six in verse six it tells us and now you know what withhold it that he might be revealed in his time then in verse seven it says for the mystery of iniquity does already work only he who now letteth will let only he who now hinders will hinder only he who prevents will prevent 
What's that? The branch of Christ. The church of the living God. The Bible believing church that is still here. And the Lord is saying, tell them, preach the gospel to every creature. And I'm soon coming. And when you do what I've given you to do, I will come and I will take you away. And when the church is taken away, then the Antichrist will have no prayer warrior to hinder him. Will have and nobody possessing the gifts of the spirit to hinder him will not have any light of the gospel that will stop the darkness coming from the antichrist that's why he says the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And then we're told in verse 8, in verse 8, and then shall that wicked capital letter W. That wicked is not talking about you, a wicked man on the street, a wicked man in the village, a wicked man, you know, on the road over there. It's talking about that wicked one. It's talking about the Antichrist. It's talking about the brutal one. It's talking about the greatest manifestation of the power of evil. It says then, shall that wicked be revealed from whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. He'll destroy him. When he, when he now appears now, he'll be in the air. He'll take the church away. Then there will be seven years of uh, tribulation, the great tribulation on the earth. And then uh, after that, after the seven years of the great tribulation, Christ will come for the saints. He'll take the kingdom and then he'll begin to reign a thousand years and Praise God, you'll be there. Amen. And then you will reign with Christ forever and ever in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 12. Revelation 17 verse 12. And the ten horns. You see the consistency. Ten toes. Daniel chapter 2. Ten horns. Daniel chapter 7, and now Revelation, and the ten hands which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, because their kingdom, their reign, their empire is to come at the end of the age, but receive power as kings one hour with the bees look at verse 13 in verse 13 these have one mind one mind against the prince of princes one mind against christ one mind with the bees one mind with satan one mind with the antichrist this it says they have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast and then in verse 14 it says and these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him you and i me me are you going to be there are you going to reign with christ he said they that are with him or Christ are called, they are chosen, and they are faithful. May God find you faithful. We're coming to point number two. Point number two, we're looking at the throne and the triumph of the true God. We're coming now, we're coming back to Daniel chapter 7. And I'm reading here, let me just read verse 13 again. In Daniel chapter 7, reading from verse 13, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came of the clouds of heaven and came unto the ancient of days, and they brought him, the Son of Man, near before him 
the ancient of days look at verse 14 in verse 14 and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people nations and languages shall serve him serve our christ his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and this kingdom that which shall never shall not be destroyed isaiah chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 4 isaiah chapter 2 verse 4 he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their and their spears into pruning hooks nation shall not lift up sword against nation he's talking now your Christ has come and Christ has overcome and Christ has set up his kingdom the millennial kingdom and there shall be no more war and nations shall not learn war anytime the nations shall not learn war anytime the throne and the triumph of the true God when you came at that days under three perspectives number one the purity and power of the eternal king number two the punishment and the perdition of earthly kingdoms number three the preeminence and the permanence of the everlasting king let's look at number one there number one there is the purity and the power of the eternal king we're looking at daniel chapter seven and i'm reading from verse nine and i beheld till the thrones were cast that were cast down they were set and the ancient of days did siege whose garment was white as snow that the purity the purity of the eternal king the purity of the eternal god and then it says and the air of his head like pure wool wisdom and it says and his throne was like the fairy flame and his wheels as cunning as burning fire look at verse 10 in verse 10 a fairy stream he judged and came forth from before him thousands 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 it's talking of multiplication thousands multiplied by thousands and thousands and thousands innumerable angels of god in heaven and ten thousand stood before him and judgment was said and the books were opened it's now coming to the time of the white throne judgment when god will see and everyone that ever lived from adam until the final day of human beings on earth with everything they've done everything you've done if you're not born again if your sins have not been forgiven and if all the dirty dirty bloods of your life if they have not been wiped away everything is in the book and as everything then comes into the book and they are judged according to those things that were written in the books and whosoever whosoever a king whosoever an emperor anyone any man any woman educated or not educated whosoever church goer or religious man whosoever an atheist or an irreligious non-religious person and whosoever was not found written in that book of life or be cast into the lake of fire judgment was said and the books were open i pray at that time you'll be on the side of the lord 
you'll be on the side of the king of kings and then your sins will have been laid on Christ judged on Christ and then you will not bear the agony and the pain and the punishment and the perdition of your sin anymore because Christ has become your substitute has become your final sacrifice has become your savior has become the one that stands between you and the judgment forever and ever. Look at Psalm 11. I'm reading from verse 7. Psalm 11. And we're looking at verse, we're looking at, let, let me go back to verse 4. In verse 4 it says, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. Then in verse 5, it says the Lord tries the righteous but the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hateth then in verse 6 it tells us upon the wicked shall he rain snares fire and brimstone and an horrible tempest this shall be the portion of of their cup. Then in verse 7, in verse 7, for the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. He, his countenance, does behold the upright. He is pure, he is holy, he is righteous. In fact, in Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 13, we're told of the purity of God and we're told of the power of God. Thou art of purer eyes that will behold evil and canst not look on iniquity. He looks at all the earth and he looks at everyone and those who are given to evil, those who are sold to evil and those who are committed to sin and iniquity his eyes are purer than beholding and approving iniquity everyone will be judged. He has purity. He has power is the eternal king. Let's look at number two there. Number two there is the punishment and the perdition. The punishment and the perdition. The punishment and the perdition of earthly kingdoms. Earthly kingdoms and all the citizens of those kingdoms that have the same nature of the beast, the same nature of the animal, the same depravity and the same defilement and the same evil deeds and evil action God will punish them and God will send them to perdition eventually look at Daniel chapter 7 verse 11 chapter 7 verse 11 I beheld then because of the because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake blasphemous words I beheld even till the beast was slain and the body destroyed and given to the burning flame look at verse 12 in verse 12 it says as concerning the rest of the bees, they had their dominion taken away yet their lives were prolonged for a season and uh, time they would live uh, through some parts of the great tribulation but at the end they're going to be judged look at revelation chapter 14 uh, reading from verse 9 revelation chapter 14 uh, we're reading from verse 9 uh, and the third angel followed them uh, saying uh, with a loud voice if any man any man, any part of the world, any man, however intelligent, any man, I don't believe and I don't believe that. I don't accept that. The world started and the world is going on and nothing will happen. If heaven is going to fall, it's going to fall on anyone. Okay, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive the mark of his on his forehead and 
in his son. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, of his anger, of his wrath. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels in the, and in the presence of the Lamb. And then in verse 11, it tells us, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receives the mark of his name. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 13. The judgment will be worldwide. In Isaiah chapter 13, reading from verse 9, it says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. This is the day of man. One man is boasting, bragging, I can do whatever, I can build whatever, I can invent anything. This is the day of man, the day of Nebuchadnezzar. This is the Babylon that I built by my might and for the glory of my name. This is the day of the Middle Persian Empire. They can set a decree and burn anyone alive and they can and set a decree and they will say if you pray if you, you cannot read the Bible in the class if you're a teacher and you cannot do anything religious and try to convert people this is their day the day of man but then the day of the Lord is coming and it says behold the day of the Lord cometh cruel both with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate and he shall destroy the sinners, the unconverted, the unrighteous, and the depraved, the people that don't care for the name of God, the nature of God, and the calling of God upon their lives, he shall destroy the sinners out of each look at verse 11 in verse 11 it says and i will punish the world for their evil the day of the lord coming the people live now as if there's no reckoning day they live now as if nothing will happen i did it yesterday nothing happened i'm doing it today nothing happens i'll do it tomorrow nothing happens the day of the lord will come and it says it will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity and i will cause the arrogance of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible in verse 13 in verse 13 therefore i will shake the heavens the sky and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger let's look at number three here number three we're looking at the we're looking at the preeminence and the permanence of the eternal, everlasting King. Revelation, uh, sorry, Daniel chapter 7. We've read it before. It's good to read it again. We're reading about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're reading about the ancient of days. We're reading about the everlasting King. And we're reading about Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer. We're reading about the one, our Redeemer that is going to come. And with the power of his resurrection, the dead in Christ shall rise. And then by the one who in due time is is able to change our vile body to be made like unto his body and we shall see him as he is and we shall go up with him we're reading that again in daniel chapter 7 verse 13 i saw 
in the night visions and behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and he brought the the angels brought him near before him and then in verse 14 were told and there was given unto him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people and nations and languages should serve him should serve him the time will come because the father has highly exalted the son that at the name the mention of that name whether in heaven or on earth or under the earth every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is lord and so all people all nations all languages shall serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and that gets us back to daniel chapter 2 look at that daniel chapter 2 we're looking at verse 44 exactly what daniel had prophesied in the interpretation of the dream that came unto nebuchadnezzar in the days of those kings in the days of those kings babylon Medo-Persia, and greece and Rome, it says, in the days of those kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. It will be full and final and forever. It shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Babylon led the kingdom to Middle Persia. And Middle Persia led the kingdom uh, for, uh, for Greece. And Greece led the kingdom to, Roman, to the Roman Empire. But this one, the kingdom of Christ coming, shall not be led to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. The kingdom of Christ will stand forever. All the kingdoms now, they cannot stand forever. After a few years, this one goes, another one comes in. And then even that one that comes in, people are saying, when is he going to leave? His time is running to an end. He will leave, another one will come in. When Christ comes in, he'll be there forever and ever and his kingdom will not be led to other people look at verse 45 there in verse 45 it assures us for as much as thou sawest that the stone was caught out of the mountain without hands and that it break in pieces the iron and the brass and the clay and the silver and the gold, the great God of heaven, has made it known to the king that what shall come to pass hereafter. The dream is certain, the interpretation thereof is sure. I pray you'll be on the side of Christ. If you're on the side of the powers of darkness, on the kingdom of darkness, maybe for some time, you might get some benefit from them, like, you know, little gold there, little silver there, little brass there, and little iron there, little clay there, but everything will soon vanish away, and then you are empty-handed, and forever and ever, you're on the other side with Satan, with the devil, and with Lucifer, and with the dragon, and with the old serpent, Pains, and then even a drop of water you will not get to cool your tongue but the wisest thing you can do is that at this time when Christ is coming and Christ is calling and he say come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest the, the, the wisest thing you can do is to surrender and submit your life unto the Lord 
and do not delay. Call upon the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. For he will pardon and he will purify and he will empower and he will give you as a child, as a follower, as a convert to Christ. And when Christ reigns, you reign for with him forever and ever in Jesus' name. Let that amen look like you want to reign forever and ever. Look at point number three now. Number three is the termination of the times of the Gentiles. The times of the Gentiles. What does that mean? Times of the Gentiles. Look at Luke chapter 21. We're looking at verse 24. In Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 24, it says, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. You know, the cruelty and the conflict between all those nations and empires, and the people shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive. The Jews shall be scattered to all nations. That's why you'll find the Jews everywhere now, almost all over the earth, although some of them from 1948 had gone back to Jerusalem, but the majority of the Jews are still everywhere. Why? Read on and you'll find why. They'll be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. You see the fight over the dome, over Jerusalem and this one claiming it and that one claiming it. It will continue. They'll be trodden down of the, of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. When the golden head of Babylon had run its course. And when the breasts and the abs of silver of middle Persia they've run their course. And when the body and the trunk of the Grecian Empire, when it has run its course. And when the iron period of the Roman Empire Empire, when they have run their course, all their course, all those Babylon and Middle Persia and Greece and Roman, they are all Gentile empires. And the times of Gentile rule will come to an end. The times of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. Everything over. And then Christ will come. And then Israel. It says in Romans chapter 11, reading from verse 22 to 26, 27, all Israel shall be saved. And when the times of the Gentiles are over and Israel now comes to reign with Christ, all those powers that had been, they'll be crushed and cancelled and dead. Christ, Christ, Christ only. Jesus only will find him is the only savior, is the sanctifier, is the baptizer, is the coming king, and now he comes to reign, and you will be there. And I will be there. Say it for yourself. We're looking at this, the termination of the times of the Gentiles. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the defiance and damnation of the man of sin. Number two, the deity and the dominion of the Son of Man. Number three, the deliverance and destiny of saints among men. Look at number one, the defiance and the damnation of the man of sin. We're looking at Daniel chapter seven. Look at the 15. Daniel was grieved. How I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, and I came 
near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this, the meaning of all this. So he told me and made me to know, to understand the interpretation of the things. And then in verse uh, 19, uh, look at this, it says in verse 19, then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse, different from uh, all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron. Remember, the last is the kingdom represented by iron and his nails of brass which devouch and break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet look at verse 20 there in verse 20 it then says and of the ten hearts that were in his head and of the others which came up before whom the three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, intelligence, and a mouth that spoke very great things, blasphemy against God, whose look was more stout, fierce, terrible, cruel, terrifying, frightening than his fellows. In verse 21, I beheld, and the same hand made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Verse 23, in verse 23, it says, Thus he said, he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse, different, more fierce from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces look at verse 24 it says in verse 24 and the ten hands out of this kingdom are ten kingdoms that shall arise and another shall rise after them and he shall be diverse from the first and he shall subdue three kings verse 25 in verse 25 it says and he shall speak great words against the most high the antichrist and shall wear out the saints of the Most High shall wear out the Jews and think to change times and laws. He'll say, remove all those laws of God. He'll want to put his own law and they shall be given unto his hand until, look at this, a time one year and times two years making three and the dividing of time half a year one plus two plus half three and a half years in the middle of the seven year tribulation and then in that middle to the end of that great tribulation will be great great tribulation that if the lord did not stop everything there will be no one alive. But remember, we are not here at that time. We shall be on high of the Lord at that time in Jesus' name. And somebody said, Amen. Look at number two here. My number two here is the deity and the dominion of the Son of Man. We've read Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. A number of times now, he will reign forever and ever. And as we look at Ephesians chapter 1, reading from verse 20, Ephesians chapter 1, reading from verse 20, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him 
from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places and then in verse 21 it says far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and then in verse 22 it says and he has put all things under his feet all things under his feet under the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ everything every power every emperor every empire every dominion every kingdom that had ever been everything will come under the mighty hand and the feet of the Lord Jesus our God our King our Lord our Savior our Redeemer and then he gave him to be head uh, and uh, to be head over all things to the church now in the head of all things and of all people of all kingdoms unto the church thank God I'm a Christian thank God I'm a believer thank God I belong to the king of kings and the lord of lords and all those things of the world will be under your feet in Jesus name because we're told in Philippians chapter 2 and I'm reading from verse 9 Philippians chapter 2 we're looking at verse 9 it says wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name and then in verse 10 it says that at the name of Jesus that's our Savior at the name of Jesus that's our Lord at the name of Jesus that's our King at the name of Jesus that is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth and then in verse 11 it tells us and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We're looking at number three here. Number three, we're talking about the deliverance and the destiny of saints among men. The deliverance and the destiny. We're looking at uh, Daniel chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 22. Daniel chapter 7 verse 22 it says until the ancient of days came and judgment was given unto the saints of the most high and the time came that the same at possession the saints possessed the kingdom the saints not the sinners the saints not the backsliders the saints not the prodigals the saints the children of God that abide and they abide unto the end the same possess the kingdoms you'll be a possessor I said you'll be a possessor look at verse 27 in verse 27 and the king and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom it's an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him somebody shout amen, amen. now we're going to reign at that time with christ what happens now at this time now where are we what's our condition what's our possession what's our privilege romans chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 20 Romans chapter 16 we're reading from verse 20 and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you who is the recipient of the grace of God there 
the possessor of the grace of God there. The grace of God that appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. You have the grace of God. This hour, this moment, this time, this period of your life, we're facing God. The God of peace shall put Satan under your feet very shortly. Disease under your feet. Powers of darkness under your feet. All the demonic powers under your feet. Stand up and march on that power. Because now behold, I give unto you power. And it says over the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Because the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly open your mouth and talk to the lord christ is coming his kingdom is coming and his kingdom will rule and reign over everything everything on earth everything you have heard everything you have seen and christ will be all in all for everyone and we don't even need to wait until that time even as at now, the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet very shortly. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. You've endured a long time during the message in the sun. Endure a little time now and take your dominion and take the kingdom and take your authority and let all those things even now come under your feet you have peace with god are you justified are your sins forgiven are you a real child of god and in all the commotion of the world are you under the preservation of the lord himself and are you claiming the authority you have the power you have are you claiming the promise the lord has given you that he'll give you power over all the power of the enemy and have you claimed the fact that the God of peace is bruising the devil and Satan and all his cohorts under your feet right now. Claim it. It is yours because through righteousness we reign with him. We reign with him and sin shall not have dominion over you. Sickness shall not have dominion over you. The power of darkness will not have dominion over you. We reign in life through Jesus Christ. And if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwell in your mortal body, it will quicken your mortal body and all those sicknesses and all those deficiencies and all those, uh, all those weaknesses will come under your feet tell the Lord I believe I accept the promise of the Lord the pronouncement of the Lord and eventually you live a victorious life a righteous life a pure life an overcoming life you live a conquering life so that when Christ will reign and you will have conquered every power on earth you will reign with the Lord tell the Lord you'll endure until the final all day because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall watch school but he that shall endure unto the end he that shall remain unto the end the same shall be saved are you saved are you keeping saved are you sanctified are you keeping sanctified have you been baptized immersed empowered and you have been immersed in the power in the ocean of the power of the holy ghost he shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and he shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem judea samaria to the uttermost part of the earth 
make sure you are saved your peace with God make sure you are sanctified you have the purity of Christ in your life and make sure you are baptized in the Holy Ghost and you have the power of the Holy Ghost milit uh, moving in your life and manifesting uh, in your life depend upon the Lord and say Lord here I am all the promises are yes and amen for me and all the good promises and prophecies of the Lord they are fulfilled in my life make sure you are part of the number of the saints of God that will abide that will remain victorious and conquering until the final day amen, amen. Somebody said you can do better than that. Yeah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the revelation you have given us that Christ will have all power, all authority, all dominion, and the kingdoms of this world will become his kingdom. And Lord, we thank you that we are part of his kingdom right now and we pray will abide will remain until the end so that on that final day as christ will reign we will reign with him in jesus name and even now in our own little empire in our own little environment in our own little situation the power to reign grant unto us in jesus name Amen. even now even now sin will not reign over us Amen. even now sickness will not reign over us Amen. even now evil spirits will not reign over us Amen. every moment day and night whether we're alone or we're in the church anywhere sin sickness and satan will be under our feet Amen. dominion Amen. power Amen. victory Amen. conquering for everyone in Jesus name yeah. and then uh, as we conquer day after day week after week month after month on that day a glorious day when Christ will appear and the saints go marching in uh, Lord my brother there will be there yeah. my sister there will be there yeah. here and online everywhere the victory of the lord will abide with us until the final day in jesus name weakness get out of that place infirmity get out of that place confusion get out of that place lord make everyone to stand on our feet nay in all these things you are more than conquerors through Christ who has loved you. That conquering power continue to carry everywhere. Yeah. Reign. Reign. Yeah. Reign. Yeah. Over every challenge of life and the Lord preserve you with his grace until the final day. Yeah. And the Lord keep you from falling. That when Christ shall come and the saints go marching in, the angels will say, Look at him there. Look at her there. She made it. You will make it. Yeah. And then you'll reign forever and ever with our God in Jesus' name. Yeah. Confirm your blessing, Lord, upon everyone. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yeah.